so you don't have to worry about that, Chad. I have. Uh, check this out. You're probably like, Brett, where's face? I'm, I'm right here, bro. Pretty cool, right? I built I built my OBS so that everything can be moved, be moved around, specifically for this reason. All right, so let me. Uh, obviously, I don't have. Uh, let me. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me check something real quick. I built OBS. Let, 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 me, let me show you this idea I got, chat. I'm pulling. I'm pulling out some uh, some some notes. Uh, actually, weapons D and D five E. So here here's what I'm thinking. Obviously, all the numbers are still. Is there a properties list. What's this called? Properties. D and D five E weapons property. So there's obviously going to be more properties. Let's say I'm building a, a baseline melee weapon. I'm thinking some materials will already have properties equipped to them before you equip it on. So that way you kind of like save yourself the uh, the thing. Uh, lights. Uh, I also want to add a masterwork property, which adds a plus one to the to hit, which I think could be pretty cool. Yo, what if I did light and I made it so that it splits damage in half? Splits uh, dice in half. If you apply this property. So master plus three is plus four to hit. Yes. Maybe. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. You know what? Yes. 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 I'm going to say yes. Bottom line, yes. Yes. Plus four to hit. Out of his master weapon. Red different materials for weapons. Uh, materials may already have uh, uh, properties equipped to them, I think is what I want to try. And then I want to add uh, reach. Good. Uh, uh, ah, yes, two handed. Box out light. And then we got finesse. Uh, now, I also want to build a wise weapon, uh, an attuned weapon. An intelligent weapon. Lightning properties. I mean, maybe. Some types of weapons. Okay, so here's what here's what I'm thinking. Uh, hold on, I'm I'm literally building the system right now. I don't know if going from heavy to light will work. Uh, so I don't actually include heavy. I don't include the heavy property. I think the heavy property is stupid and there's no reason for it. Small characters can't wield this, but there's no like benefit for being small. You know what I mean? So it's like, why? what's the point of being a small race? Although I'm sure some races are balanced with like other things that make them cooler, but at the same time, it's just, there's no. I always I always thought that was really weird to do, you know, to limit that thing. All right, so let's say I'm I'm doing some I'm doing some head calculations right now. Let's start with a DC six. Okay, so let me go and show you exactly the way that I would I would do this. Okay, uh, I'm gonna assume. What's a good proficiency? Let's say I'm proficient in blacksmithing. Uh, let's say I, uh, we'll start, let's, I'm a level three blacksmith, which means I have a proficiency of plus two. I'll make it an intelligence based uh, skill. So I get plus four. So I got a plus four to blacksmithing. Here's the idea. Okay, so there's gonna be like a set list of recipes that you can already build through the blacksmithing system that include all of the weapons that you can already make, which will already have their own DCs associated with them. The DCs themselves will be relatively small, anywhere between like a DC eight to a DC 12, depending on what you'd like to go ahead and do with that. However, what's going to be the appeal of the system is the custom uh, weapons and armor. Armor I'm still working on, but let's for the custom 
weapon build, where essentially you take an ingot of your choice. We'll start with, uh, let's just say a simple, like, steel. We'll do, like, a simple steel ingot. Um, this ingot has no enhanced properties attached to it. You are effectively molding this into a weapon of your choice. Um, the idea behind this, and this is kind of where I need to figure out where the baseline DC is, where everything increases, yada, yada, yada. Um, the cool thing about this is figuring out what you need. So you need to go at, there's a couple of, uh, things you have to do with this. This is, again, this is, this is very rough. Uh, so obviously this is not finalized. Imagine if you will, a, 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 a ball, a molten, a molten material that you're now going to be able to smith and forge into. You need to go ahead and complete successful DC checks, uh, to, to create the, the weapon that you want. Um, once you finalize the weapon, that's it. It's done. It can't be crafted any further. So it kind of does turn into this little little bit of a gamba system. But every time you add something to it, you have to you have to beat the DC again, and the DC is a little bit higher this time. So we're starting with the blacksmith DC of a DC six. It's a very simple DC, but we're gonna go ahead and begin. Um, there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm adding some plus twos here. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, big gamba. So you got this. So let's let's start very simple. All right, let's start with this very simple thing. Let's say I want to go ahead and build a dagger. Uh, I wanna I want a piercing weapon that does one d four damage, and then I'm done. That's it. That's all I want to build. It's very something very stupid, very simple. Um, uh, by the way, we can't see what you're doing. That's fine. I'm just writing notes right now uh, on the side, and then you're gonna look over to the uh, the the left. And you see this over in the... Hello. Do you see that? That's where you're going to see all the rolls there. So um, I'm just kind of like saying it all out there. Why not a 2d4 dagger? You can do 2d4. It's just going to be a little more... A little more complicated. Ooh. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. Although I, I really would like to figure out different ways to add multiple dice, perhaps. Um... But I think I I think we're gonna stick with the 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 dagger progression. A dagger's are simple, it doesn't have finesse. Uh let's just start, let's just start very simple. So the most of material is gonna have a flat cost no matter what it is. And essentially this flat cost allows you to create weapons uh, of different different qualities, different values, things of that that nature. As you continue your skills uh, uh, there, even though it was made with a flat cost, uh, you're able to at that point uh, build it to where you want and then it scales the price up depending on what you what attributes you've added to it and then you could sell it for a baseline price or a price of your choice. Uh, other optional rules I would like to explore is um, failure. Um, what happens when you fail specifically? Part of me kind of wants Part of me kind of wants to uh, make it so that if you fail within a certain number, the effect doesn't go off. But if you fail over a certain number, you effectively butcher the whole thing, essentially. So I like the idea of, and I'll have to play test this a little bit more. Um, I like the idea of, like, if you fail over a five, that's it. Now, other things I was thinking about is, like, how does guidance work for something like this? Um, so since this is a this effectively is a one-shot thing, um, you can use got this the effect of guidance from someone else once. And then that's it. You can get only one guidance buff, and you gotta choose when to use it. And you specifically have to choose to use it. Uh let me actually see how guidance works. Lucky? Maybe. Uh, I touch one will increase once before the spell ends. The target it can roll uh, D4. Oh, gotcha. So there you go. So if uh, a D4 and add the number of roll to one ability check of its choice. So effectively, the way guidance works is someone can cast guidance on you before you start casting the spell. At that point, uh, and before you start to work at that point in time. Yeah, bless doesn't work for this. So uh, Summer comes up. She slaps you in the butt because obviously Summer is the perfect example when it comes to guidance. Uh, Summer slaps you in the butt with guidance, and then you get to work. Uh, you have a guidance buff while you are working at this point in time. Uh, you can use this guidance buff one time. The target can roll a d4 and add that uh, to a roll to one of the ability checks of this choice. It can roll the die before or after making the ability scorch. And, but then that's it. Once you use it once, that's it. So let's start with the DC5. Let's, let's, let's first start with the without the option of failure. Fail is fail. 
What about Bardic Inspiration? Yep, they can Bardic Inspire. But again, what? Is Guidance Concentration? It is. It is a concentration thing, which is why you need someone else to do it for you at that point. Well, actually, no. I mean, technically, since it is a... You, you can cast Guidance on yourself before you start working. That works as well. Once on one weapon? Yep. What about the help action? Um, I'm also thinking about some, some ideas for help acting. Uh, maybe help action to assist in not failing could be a potential thing you could do um, at that point in time. But I kind of want the help action to add like a flat bonus more than it actually be at that point. So these are things that I, again, have to, to, to play test. But more importantly, I need to make sure that the system, it does not get so complicated and so bloated that even a new player can't figure out what the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? That's kind of where we have to go ahead and work with that. So, here we are. Enhance ability. Don't look at that. These are all great inputs, by the way, guys. I like this. I'm going to add enhanced ability to that. Uh, blacksmithing is probably going to be an intelligence-based uh, skill. It's a concentration spell, so someone else would have to do it, or you would have to do it. What happens with the... Uh... Target has advantage on charisma checks. Fox is cunning. Target is... Oh, yeah. So if they have Fox is cunning, they work with that. They have an advantage on blacksmithing check. One hour. I mean, it's a second level spell, so you could absolutely go ahead and do that at that point. So maybe that's actually a good point. I might, I might make enhance ability a uh, one-off as well. Help action could be a one-off. I effectively want all these options to be one-offs more than actual continuing things. Go about doing it, so that way it adds value to your actions. So that could be something that we can do. Um, and then Bardic Inspirations will went off. All right. There's a lot of things you can do if you get a, a good thing for that point. Uh, again, the system needs to be simplified and not bloated. So I have to actually see everything that's working and what you would do that if you want to go and do everything with there. Uh, one th cool thing about tool purchasing is it's not tied to stats. So the uh, one challenge uh, can be smithing with intelligence. Another could be uh, with dexterity. Oh. So that's the benefit of tools is the fact that so yeah i mean so tell me a little bit more about tool proficiencies chat so is it that you choose the stat that you want to use you can use any stat you want tools are not tied to a single ability since proficiency of the tool represents broader knowledge of this use for example gm may ask you to make a dexterity check ah it's the dm declares it I suppose it really depends on how you're doing it. What if we, uh, chat, what if we made the blacksmith skill in any? Uh, I think for blacksmith, I would do strength, dex, or in. How's that sound? One of those three skills. As long as it makes sense, yeah. I, li I like any uh, just for, for freedom, but, uh, you know. Honestly, chat, I think I would want to give Blacksmith any. And the reason why is because any of those skills, you can easily do that. Because for Charisma, you can actually look at Charisma more as a flat-out magic. A magical, sort of like an Aura Smith. Yeah, don't look, at, don't look at Charisma more as a chatty one. Look at Charisma as, like, your primary. Because if, you're, if your skill with Charisma is high, then you're attuned to magic at that point in time. Yeah, exactly. It's more you're using magical force for that. Intelligence, it, it, I mean, all of them pretty much explain pretty good. Because strength itself can literally be your, literally your strength against to molding the material. Dexterity could be your finesse when it comes to crafting equipment. Constitution could be literally your fortitude and the heats of the fire and keeping yourself sturdy and steady so that way you're able to craft everything there. Uh, whiz, uh, intelligence is your knowledge of the craft itself and exactly how you want to mold at that point in time. Uh, wisdom is literally just your awareness of what's happened at the forge, seeing when the heat's getting too hot and being able to be aware of what's going on. And charisma, you can literally use magic 
essentially. You're like an innate aura smithing ability at that point in time. So honestly, everything, at, at, at any any skill would be perfect. And that also allows people who want to be blacksmiths to be blacksmiths and not necessarily put that, lock them away into their own stat. How's that sound, chat? Sound good? Sound good? And it keeps it simplified and keeps it good. So there it goes at that point. Big nodders on that end. I like that too. So let's go ahead and say, yeah. So let's say on average, a, a second level, let's use a second level person at this point. A second level person. Uh, it's simple if everyone can do it. So already, uh, for, so I'm in IO phase three, I'm going to introduce a, a trait system that you can choose one trait every level up. And the traits allow you to become proficient in a skill. Um, and if you get a second, if you get a second trait, uh, you can get expertise in that skill. So if you really want to focus on a skill, you can go ahead and give yourself, you can go ahead and spend two traits to get yourself expertise on a skill. If you and blacksmith is one of the skills that you can for trait. The traits are like, look at traits as sort of like mini feats. So traits can be like one time gain five hit points or, or get an extra hit die. Um, also another thing could be, uh, advantage on initiative check, uh, initiative saves. Uh, it could also be any skill as a proficiency, any skill as an expertise. Uh, I could include new versus traits. So parry, uh, as a reaction, you get plus three to AC against one attack. It's little things at that point. Won't that make rogues and artificers feel bad? Why would you say that? I don't think it will. Chat, there's already feats that exist to give you uh, expertise. There's already, there's, uh, yeah, there's already feats that give you expertise, so why would they feel bad? Also, I highly doubt a rogue or an artificer would feel bad specifically because someone got expertise, because there's a lot of other things that they can go and do at that point. Would rogues be the best crafters? Not necessarily, because a lot of these craftings you can literally use different skills for. IO is all about crafting the world that you want to make. You know what I mean? Daughters? Is Manda a god? Uh, Manda is an immortal, but she is not a god. I'm a rogue and I'm offended and hurt. I'll never recover. I guess I might as well sneak attack something to oblivion. <laughs> I think rogues are going to be okay. <laughs> I think rogues are going to be all right. All right, so 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 here's here's the general idea. Let's let's start with a DC six. Uh, we'll do a DC six, um, and the idea is every time that you work on the metal, the DC goes up depending on the attribute that you add on to the material. Um, this also includes some stacking attributes. For example, the increase in dice damage is a stacking attribute that you can go ahead and continuously stack on and on and on as long as you fill there. Once you uh, check out, once you're done at that point in time, once you go, that's it, the weapon's done. You can't, you can't forge it anymore. That's it. You're effectively doing big gamba on the skill that you have. So let me show you exactly how the system goes. I see some of you are making assumptions. Let me show you. So we'll start with the DC six. The DC six at this point is you've just got this ball. You've got this ball here. I want to go ahead and make a piercing dagger that is 1d4, then that's it, okay? Now, to make a weapon, the first thing you need to do, or at any point you need to do at this point in time, is you specifically uh, need, at this point, to add what kind of uh, damage it does. Your only option currently is bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. It needs to fulfill one of those requirements to be considered a weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and start to mold the weapon into a sort of pointed object at that point. Um, so I need to build, I need, and by the way, critical, mm, I, for, for smithing, I want to leave critical misses and hits out of the equation. Or I want to add a trait that says you can't critically miss when you, when you blacksmith. Or you can't critically miss when you craft. But I have no idea if that's a good way to go about it. Are critical misses fun? Is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Critical misses, I think, in combat are pretty good. Or critical failures, I think, are good. Um, but when it comes to crafting and money involved, I don't know if that is a good thing or not. So, 
I'll leave that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that open. Uh, I do like I. You know what? You know what? Maybe we make that part of the expertise. If you gain expertise in a skill, you can't critically fail with them. How does that sound, chat? You've just mastered the skill so much that even if you critically fail as a DC, um, you're good. You, you've spent the two traits that you need to effectively master the skill to the point where even if, yeah, yeah, I think that could work really well. That's what I think. What's the penalty of failure? Uh, you botch, it, so, the, so this material costs money. Depending on the material you're using, you have to pay. You have to either have to find it or pay money for it. And if you fail, it's it's destroyed. You can't use it anymore. It's scrapped. Money gone. Money lost, my friend. Money lost. So if this is like a 50 gold piece piece of material and you're trying to build a simple dagger, then yeah, absolutely. Um, but the idea behind this, instead of doing that, you can do it at that point. Why not make a separate crafting skill tree that you can level? That's a lot of work. And we're trying to keep it simple and not bloated. You want the system to not be bloated. You want we want people to be able to pick up on the system right away. So if I have like a whole system and crafting tree and make it complicated, you can make the system bloated and complicated. That's the easy part. But you want to make it simple so that anyone can get into it. The idea is okay. You've got this this piece of material. It's DC six to 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 fulfill. And essentially, what you're doing is you're adding things to it. So look at all the properties that you can go and apply and add it to it. Every property increases the DC by plus two every time you successfully apply the property. Um, so you can go ahead and attempt to apply multiple properties if you want. Um, we can have properties rules specifically if you'd like to go ahead and do it that way, or we can have them where you can apply multiple properties. Um, there are certain stacking properties like damage dice that improves by plus two. The only thing that increases by plus one. Actually, Dad, you know what? Fuck it. Everything's plus two. If you want to add a property, because again, we're keeping it simple, baby. Um, every trait you add is a plus two. You are required to add a damage trait. So, DC six is the bottom line. I'm gonna go ahead and make this. Let let let's chat. Shall we begin? How many total rolls to craft? Up to the crafter. Let's just do it. Let's just throw the system out. We'll have a base DC of six. I like the idea of a base DC of zero. Personally. But right, let's 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 start with six. Let's start with six. Let's start with the base DC of six. Okay. Uh, imagine if you will, you're currently in your forge. You're you're smithing away. Um, you've got a piece of molten material that you would like to forge into a magnificent weapon. We're starting very simple. We're just making a dagger. If you guys would like to go ahead and at that point in time, um, at that point in time, what if you can up the DC? Okay. Anyways, I, I, I'm focusing. Sorry, chat. I, I'm I'm done reading chat. I won't do this. Um. Let's make let's let's use the system to just make a dagger. We'll add finesse. We'll add piercing. It'll do 1d4 damage. We'll add light to it, and then we're done. That's it. Okay. That's it. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. So um, light I already have is a split dice total. I'm thonking. Light is just so wild. Light's a big boy one. Okay, you know what? You know what, chat? Let's start DC zero. Let's just do it. DC zero, baby. Simple. DC zero. So for light, light allows you to hold the weapon in your offhand. Um, but it cuts your dice in half. So whatever your final dice is, it cuts it in half. So if you manage to get like a like a 2d6, it'll it'll count the, the number of dice that you have in half, and each dice adds on to it. So you go from the idea is you go uh, 1d4, 1d6, 1d8, 1d10, 1d12, and then the 1d12 turns into 2d6, 2d8, 2d10, 2d12, and then 3d6. It, it, it keeps going up and up. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. And that's kind of where, like, do I need to do a damage cap? Do I need to establish that you have to get to a certain point once you start doing the damage cap? Do I need to start stacking the increase of DC? 2d4? And that's, yeah, at some point, I'd like to go ahead and do this. All right, let's 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 begin. Uh, 3d6 worth in 2d12? Yeah, I guess it is. 
I guess it is. I suppose so. Alright, anyways. Fuck it. Let's do it. We're just I'm keeping it distracted. We'll start with DC zero. Let's use this system to create a simple a simple deck. Okay. It's gonna be piercing, so I, 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 it, you, we obviously need a piercing thing. As we currently have zero damage on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and roll a 1d20 plus five. I'm a, I'm a level two blacksmith. I just want to create a dagger. All right, that's a critical hit. <laughs> so already there it is. I create the piercing. That's plus two. So now the DC is now two because we have a property of piercing on it. So I need to beat a DC of two. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and add the 1d4 damage now. So here we go. Twelve done. It's now a 1d4 piercing weapon. DC4. Okay. I'd like to go ahead and add finesse to it. I have to beat a DC4. 16. Perfect. It's now a finesse 1d4 piercing weapon. We're now looking at a DC6. I want to add light at that point. Easy. Done. Now a DC8 if I want to continue. But I don't want to continue. I want to finalize at this point. I've created a dagger. A very simple, very efficient dagger. Oh, no, I don't. Because light halves the damage. So 1d4 would literally become like 1d2. It, well, well, first, it wouldn't become anything. Um, so I want to use... It has to specifically use half the damage dice. So kind of look at... Uh, look, look at dice as like a dice score. If you have a, if you have a dice score of 1, it's 1d4. Uh, if you have a dice score of 2, it's 1d6. So if you have light... It lowers the dice score by one, making it a 1d4. So if you want to have a 1d6 light weapon, 1d8, 1d10, you need four dice, and then cut that, that's 1d6, is the way that you would probably want to go ahead and do it to make it light at that point. But if I want a, a light weapon, well then that, or a light 1d8, well then I need six dice. So it continues to increase the stack because light is already such a powerful attribute that it continues to stack up how high it's going to be. So I need, so for a DC eight, that's kind of complicated. It is kind of complicated, but I feel like from a balance standpoint, you would kind of need a table at that point in time. D4, D6, D8, and then dice 1D4, 1D6, 1D8, 2D4, 2D6, 2D8, 1D6, D4, D6, D8. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. Well, because I understand also when you look at 1d4, it's like, well, what if it's a 1d8 and then you cut in half? 1d6 needs a 1d12. 1d8 needs a 2d8 at that point in time. Okay. And that's kind of where it gets it gets really difficult at that point. Every Yeah, so if effectively every skill, every dice you go up, and I might need a simple I might need a table for that at that point in time. Light weapons can't get a D10 and D12. That's right. But in this system they can. And that's the point. They effectively create powerful weapons that you make with your own hands that you would not be able to find anywhere else because you have become an expertly smithed blacksmith. So, to make my to, to make my light dagger, I need two damage dice, which means I need to ha have it. The light uh, halves the damage die. Heavy doubles it. Uh, no. I, I'm not really using anything for heavy right now. All right. Um, I might use heavy later, but we'll see. Also, daggers don't start as light. Yeah, no, they don't. Well, because these are... You have, chat, you have to understand, you are... This is a custom weapon. So effectively, if I want to make a dagger, I have to follow the same rules as that. So, which means I need to increase the damage dice by two instead of one. Two damage dice is 1d6. One damage dice is 1d4. So here we go. I'm going to once again increase because I'm making a light weapon. Well, perfect. Now it's a DC 10. Do you see how the, uh, do you see how we're stacking up now at this point in time? So I can stop here and I've got my dagger made, ready to go. But now what if I want to make a scimitar? Do I feel capable in my skills to do that? DC 10, which means I have to roll a five or higher. I can do that. But if I want a 1D6 weapon, I have to I have to roll two more dice, effectively. And that's where it gets tough. If I want a 1D6 light weapon, I, want, I don't want a dagger anymore, I want a sword. I've decided while I'm crafting, I want a sword. 
I don't get a DC 10. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and add two more damage dice. So here we go. That's a seven. I butchered it. I rolled a two. I botched it. I botched it. I got, I got, I got cocky. Done. Shambles. It's dead. It's dead. I think DC zero works good. The mats, dude. <laughs> you fucked it up. And I keep in mind, I'm a level two blacksmith at this point in time. I've got a limited amount of intelligence and I don't have people assisting me on this. Is DC stacking depending on the weapon type or the properties? It's a flat two. Flat two, period. Any property you add to it, it adds, D it adds two. It adds two to the DC. Starting at a DC zero. Can you salvage it? No. Maybe a trait later that lets you salvage for, for half. Blacksmith the Cup's class? No, it's a custom ability I'm working on. You know? What do you mean you fucked up the current step or the whole process? The whole process. It's, ga it's gambling. You're gambling at this point in time. I mean, you could literally add a rule where, like, your first botch is long as under five, but then I feel like it overcomplicates it at that point in time. Would you have Chris do anything special? I thought about that. Ooh, chat. Ooh, chat. Ooh, chat. How do you like this for a crit roll? If you roll a crit, DC doesn't increase. What about that? If you roll a crit, the DC doesn't increase. And if you roll a critical miss, the DC goes up by four. So even if you're successful at it, you still botch it up. So even if you're skillful enough, you, you fucked it up to a point. It's still, you still succeeded if you still beat the number, but the DC is increased because it's been actually pretty bad. Ooh. Roll again, immediately save it. No, 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 no. If you've, if you've already met the number, even with a critical miss, you don't botch it, you don't destroy it. But now, just something terrible has happened. So the DC goes up by four instead of two. And at that point, you might just want to cut your losses and be like, you know what? This is it, this is the weapon, done. Mold to what it is, we'll sell it later for more materials. It's all about passing the DC, that's exactly it. First roll, that one. Yeah, because if you roll not one, but your skill's high enough that you still beat the DC, yeah, you did it, but there is such a, there's an impurity you have to work around now, because and the DC dramatically goes up because of that. If the roll is a critical miss, then can I just stop the process? Yeah, I mean, if you already beat, if you beat, if you beat the number with the critical miss, you can, but the DC is now higher for your next trait. So instead of a DC 10, it becomes a DC 12 for the next thing you have to beat up. So you might look at that and be like, oh God, terrible time but you don't feel that rejection of like well i rolled poor i just rolled poorly you still get something and you still have the choice to be like we can move we can push through this or you can be like nah fuck that i'm done i'm done would a rogue's reliable talent work for this let me look at reliable talent Yeah, I definitely wouldn't mind heavy being at. So here's the thing, chat. Um, I have the two-handed weapon, uh, two-handed property. First of all, you can't have light and two-handed. Second of all, it applies a minus two to the DC instead of a plus two for making a two-handed. Actually, simplifying it, making it easier to craft a weapon. So there are definitely detriment properties I want to include. Like for example, if we make heavy a minus one to hit. We can literally do a, a minus two to that as well. It keeps it very simple. What happens when we want to add an effect like ice damage? Um, there would be options to do that. There would be options to do that. Absolutely. There would be, there would be options to do that. Uh, reliable talent. Let me go and take a look at this real quick. Uh, 
You have to be a level 11 rogue, which you can still learn in IO, you just can't get to level 11. Yeah, we gotta get the basics first. By 11th level, you refine your skills, you approach perfection. Whenever you make an ability check that lets you add your proficiency bonus, you can treat uh, a, a D20 roll of nine as a, uh, or lower as a 10. Uh, reliable talent would not apply to blacksmithing. There are, certain, there are just certain skills that it would not apply to. Um, I, so I kind of want like a base skill system and a secondary skill system. The base skills are obviously all the skills that you see that's that's already staple into the edition, and the secondary skills is crafting, fishing, things like that. So as to not cheapen the uh, the, 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 the the side experience. Uh, how'd this work for Magic Item Adept for Artificers? Yeah, I want to add, I definitely want to add more weapon prophecy. Uh, Magic Item Adept? Excuse me. Oh, uh, what, what, what? Magic Item Adept. Artificer. What does that do? Crafting artificer. Oh, it's a crafting module. Really? I mean, you'll still be able to use reliable talent. You just won't be able to do it. That. I uh, actually don't know what that is. Magic item adapt. Let me look at this real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's a 10th level ability. Let me look at this real quick. You can attune up to four magic items at once. If you craft a magic item with a rarity of common or uncommon, it takes a quarter of the normal time. It costs you half as much as you Yeah. Yeah. I think it would just be half the material cost. It's a high level feature. I think I, I think I think you could do that. That's wild. Yeah. But yeah, that's the idea. Woo! That's the idea that I'm thinking. Is there somewhere I could look up all the systems you've come up with that I that I finished? Yeah, you can uh, Patreon. It is a Game Master trade for Patreon. How significant is the time cost going to be? I, I generally don't know. I generally don't know. I mean, literally, we could say an hour per step. Maybe. Why do you want to change it from if you blacksmith, you're a blacksmith to a trait system? Just because of the systems behind it. I think I had eight hours for Magic Item crafting the Arcane Academy. Yeah, I I, I kind of want to revamp the Arcane Academy Magic, uh, Magic Item building. In the end, I'm like, eh, it, 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 it doesn't feel modular enough. Essentially. It doesn't feel modular enough. See, every property you add, I think will take an hour. We can also include a trait that literally halves that time to like a speedy crafting or something like that. Like traits are supposed to be like really minor feats. You know, or again, we can say expertise is literally does the following makes it so that you can't critically fail. Um, and blacksmithing takes half the time. So your symbol club is what D8? Make a symbol club with this. You mind, uh, pre existing weapons is just is, is literally just a, a one and done. Because you follow, because there's, it, there's a set recipe that you follow at that point in time, it's a one and done skill check. That's it. You don't have to do multiple skill checks. If it's already a pre existing weapon, because it's been made and done so many times, your blacksmith ability does this. This allows you to add a little more panache, a little bit more flavor to it, essentially, at that point. What's happening? Uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm kind of showing off a, a, cra a blacksmithing system. I, I'm. I'm I'm playing around with current. So. All right. Well, let's go ahead and say I'm a level 10 blacksmith. Let's just jump it. Let's just jump into that end. Plus four to that. Plus uh, five, nine. I want expertise. Shit. 
8, 13. Let's just do it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a expertise blacksmith. Let's do it. Is Tamto here? What? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Why are you looking around? <laughs> Where's Tomato? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Get him out of here. Yo, Jom, that's real Krongo, dude. Being a, you're being a real Krongo right now. <laughs> Brett, where is Tamto? I don't know, dude. Somewhere else. Be gone. Be gone. <laughs> that guy's a real crungo, dude. <laughs> I look forward to you complaining about that in someone's Discord. I went into a streamer's chat asking for another streamer and then the streamer kicked me out. What a what a mean streamer. Rolls eyes. Fucking no. Don't worry, chat. I'll make sure to ask where all of my streamer friends are next time. So when you want to know where they are, I'll just tell you. You got it, friends. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so let's go with yeah, let's say I'm a level 10. Let me see the let me see the damage I can do with this, dude. I, I just want to make a stat stick. That's it. I want to make a big boy stat stick, and I want to see how that works. Okay. Let's say I'm a level ten blacksmith, plus thirteen to blacksmithing. Let me roll that. Oh baby, I'm ready to go. I want to make I want to make the biggest, beefiest two-handed club. Like a, the biggest mace. I want to make the all king mace, baby. I want to just, I just want to beat the shit out of people. Let's fucking go, dude. All right, sorry, DC, you here. I'm gonna make a bludgeoning weapon. Here we go. Boom. Oh, DC two. I'm gonna add a dice. Boom. Now we're at DC four. This is we're at DC four. We're doing one d four damage. Here we go. Keep going. Boom. There it is again. We're now DC six at one d six. Here we go. Boom. I like the I like the eight. DC eight at one D uh, uh at, at one D eight. Here we go. Uh boom. Yep. DC ten with one D ten. Here we go. Oh, literally it pairs up. Here we go. Boom. Uh, DC 12 with 1D 12. This next one goes to 2D 6. You guys ready? Why are we getting 2D 4, honestly? I kind of like the idea of it rolling over to the second dice at this point in time. It kind of adds a little bit of a buffer. And yeah, it does less damage, but you're raising the min damage because of the second dice. You know what I mean? Let's do it. I'm doing it. Here we go. 1d20 plus 13. Here we go. Oh, no. It's not going to increase to 1d20. Here we go. Boom. All right. Here I go. Here I go. There it is. DC 14. And now I'm looking at a, a 2d4. 2d4. Here we go. I'm, keep, I'm going. Boom. There it is. DC 16 at a 2d6 now. I got this weapon now does 2d6, which is the highest weapon that it, it, it typically can do at this point. Like, period. I got bludgeoning. I got that. There it is. We got the 2d6 right there. Of course, I'm going to go higher. I want to build a, a, a boom. That's a critical hit. The DC doesn't go up. And now we're looking at a 2d8. Let's go. Boom, 19. All right, see, now we're getting, now we're getting into the danger zone, chat. Now we're getting in the danger zone where if I roll shit, my hard work can be gone. I was just thinking how the damage might work. We do 1d4. What? No, 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 no. I like the idea of it rolling, rolling dice. I like the idea of it rolling dice. 
because we're already at 2d10, which is really good for a, just a just a a, a, sh a beat shit weapon. He had heavy from minus one to hit. Yep, and that would lower the DC. You would go from 18 to 16 at that point in time. 25% mm -hmm. of failure. Yeah, I do like those. No, I do like those odds. Dude, this isn't even a two-handed weapon yet. This is currently one-handed. We can do one. We could do. We can. We can. Let's, let's do it. Two-handed. Boom. DC 16 at 2d10. It's now a, a two-handed weapon. Give me more. Give me a 2d12. Let's go. Boom. That's another critical hit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 2d12. Yep, we're going to roll back to 3d4. We're going to roll back to 3d4. We're currently a DC 16 two-handed bludgeoning weapon that deals 2d12 damage. Which means, yeah, you can look at this now and go, wait. Go down to 3d4, but I have to do multiple steps. I have to do multiple steps. I don't, I, I'm going to stop here. Some people may decide that. However, some people, some people may be like, but what if we can get it to 3d6? What if we get it to 3d10? What if we get it to 3d12, baby? What if we do the big boy? What if we push it all the way? At that point, you kind of already have your inherent ca cap. You know what I mean? That even though the DCs continue to increase at that point in time, you have your inherent cap. So yeah, you're you're kind of rolling it down, and by rolling it down, you're you're raising the minimum damage, which already is a pretty pretty cool move. You have a downgrade upgrade, not necessarily, because instead of having a minimum damage of two, you have a minimum damage of three. You know. And yeah, I do have to get it to a three D eight at that point to to achieve what this is. You know, and that kind of keeps that kind of keeps the it, it capped at that point in time. You know, we can also have some materials just have caps, have damage caps, where like steel could have a uh, have a cap of 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 two d six, but then you could find exclusive materials that raise that cap. You know. So, so that way you still have that system in there, but then you can find a really cool material that's a damage cap of 3d20, and you're just like, or a damage cap of three dice, and you're like, oh, fuck yeah. I know you think cutting out the d10 and d12 would be good, but honestly, I, I genuinely think, could we increase the DC if we want to go back to one-handed? Dude, once, you, once you're in, you're in. Once you're in, you're in. I mean, I guess you could. I mean, you're effectively risking yourself at that point. You're like, I want to do one-handed now. I want to go back to one-handed. <laughs> well, okay, you gotta you gotta play the game. You gotta you gotta go against the dice again. I'm still I still got D16. I'm doing really good. As long as I don't roll a one or three, I'm all right. You know. I'm gonna go back to one-handed. Let's do it. Oh, it's one-handed now. DC18. A 2d12. 2d12, bludgeoning, one-handed. I risk the, I risk the biscuit. <sighs> I got five or higher. I can do that, right? But then I have to do 40. That, that's where I'm at. Then I'm like, okay, now I want to do 3d4. What if you did d, d4, d6, d8, d... No, 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 no. I like... No, no, that sounds good. I'm good, Joe. Make it light. If I make it light, chat. Yeah, I have, now I have, to, I have to figure out. So 1d4, 1d6, 1d8. Oh, this is actually really good. 1d4, 1d6, 1d8, 1d10, 1d12. So I, I'm always dealing in systems of five, which means I have a, a 10 damage dice, which means if I make it this light, it immediately drops down to d12. And that's why this system works. That's why this system works for the way it works. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Fuck me. <laughs> so I got 10 damage dice. No, it's no metric system, dude. <laughs> if, I had, if I had eight dice and I cut that in half, that just lowers it to a 1d10. 
Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It turns two d eight to one d ten. It doesn't work. You kind of have to. You kind of have to do it that way, don't you? So then, if you do one d eight, yeah. But then, what if I do two d four? That goes back to one d four. That's not fair. You kind of have to do it in numbers. Would be a list of base materials needed. Uh, materials need each property. No, no, no. So, so there's certain so I definitely want certain properties to be linked to certain materials. So maybe like a firestone, uh, actually unlocks you to make a fire uh, property weapon if you want, which I think could be really fun. Um, also, materials can have certain caps where like the damage cap is 2d12, but then you find let's say like a rainbow ore or whatever, and that rainbow ore has a four a uh, four dice cap, you know. But the fact is, if I've got if I have guidance, if I have someone like ready to smack my ass and re ready to go we're like, we're doing a dc 18 we're at the we're at the high dice right now so i'm thinking i'm currently thinking 2d12 is good but if i want 3d12 i gotta go i gotta go through i gotta go through another 10 dc i'm eventually gonna have to get to dc 28 if i want a 3d12 weapon fuck you know can you versatile a D12 weapon for a two-handed damage of a... Yeah, no. I was thinking about adding versatile, but versatile just doesn't feel like it would work. You know? I think versatile... Mm, yeah, versatile doesn't work with this system. What would happen if you have a... You want to add it, but you just can't add the loading property. It's only two more, yeah, but that's the thing is why I do that if I can just increase the damage overall. You know what I'm saying? The only way to make versatile work uh, is if it added uh, two damage dice. You know what I mean? And with this system, that just doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, chat? You know what I'm saying? No gun swords? I think you could do it. I think you could absolutely make a gun sword. Attach like a like a like a weapon to it. I think you can absolutely do that. But at that point you're all you at that point you're adding a second weapon. So I think with this system. And that's I see that's also what's good when you have a system like this, chat. Alright, let's say I got this big huge boom thing and I wanna add a cannon to it. I want to add a, a, I want to add a range can and do it. You know, you would effectively have to build a range weapon into it that increases the DC, as I think the best way to go about it. So you're still using the same DC system, but now you're adding a secondary weapon. So you go uh, add a range weapon. That's a two, two. You know, increase the range by, uh, and, then, and then you can have like a range scale. You know what I mean? Where it's like every 30 feet. Um, it's 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 30 and then it it uh, doubles for whatever long range is you know what I mean or triples for long range you got 2060 or 3060 and then it turns into 6180 and then it turns into 90 270 you know and then you gotta be keep increasing the DC of that but then you also get to apply different damage dice to that you know what I mean and already we've gone all in on that so I think it's I think it's possible to make a gun sword if you want like a secondary range weapon I think that could be a lot of fun but you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to use the same system that's in place. You know. Let's make a gun sword. That sounds like fun. Let's do that. What do you think of this system? I I, I feel like it works, chat. As you can see, we can make some nasty ass weapons. Oh! Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm done. We built it. We built the. We built the, the. The super mace. We built the super mace, bro. The light also keeps it capped as well, which makes it really well. But we could do a one d twelve. I'm gonna do a one d twelve. Uh, one d twelve. Uh, light weapon. Here we go. Oh, baby. Now it's light. That one d twelve light and a DC twenty. I'm. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Runs away with my light mace. Let's fucking go. 1d12. Goodoosh, goodoosh. <laughs> it's so light. 
<laughs> All right, give me a second, chat. Uh, I have to look at some properties. I specifically have to look at the the range the range weapons, uh, ammunition, range. It's thirty and eighty, and that's the loading to the. What does loading do? Because of the time required to load, you can only fire one piece of ammunition from it. An action bonus, extra action, regardless of the burn. Can't multi attack with loading. Loading's a drawback everyone ignores. Yeah, it seems kind of stupid. Honestly, it seems really dumb. Why? Ooh, my weapon does 1d8. Ooh, that seems stupid. Yeah, no wonder I ignore that shit. You know? All right, so when I'm looking at ranged weapons, there really isn't much much to look at here. The only thing I'm going to add is uh, range, uh, was it 8320? We're going to do 3090. So 1x, 3x. Um, and then I'm going to add the attribute transforms weapon into range. Okay. So we're making a gun blade, right? Let's make a gun blade. Let's imagine how we make a gun blade. Okay. You can absolutely add two different weapons to this where it has a secondary option to it. You can absolutely do that with this system. You can do that very easily with this system. We're not gonna do, we're not, loading's out, loading's out. We're not gonna do loading. We could, I mean, honestly, we could do loading. And then just lower the DC by two, but some people will simply look at that as there, but we can give the option. So we'll add loading with a minus two. Yo, bro. And then start firing. Oh, fuck yeah, it's part of your actions. Oh, fuck. Start with loading, nah, 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 nah. I'll, I'll have loading as a minus two for someone who wants it, but more than likely people are gonna look at that and be like, that's not worth it. And it's like, yeah, dude, don't do it then. <laughs> don't do it. All right, here we go. We're gonna make a gun blade. We're gonna make a gun blade, dude. Yo, what if we include the property melee blast as a plus two? Allows you to use a ranged attack in melee. So if you want, as part of your multi-attack, you can slash, slash, and then blast with the gun. If you want to do something like that. I don't know what I would call it, but essentially it'll allow you to attack a, a target in melee with a ranged weapon. Point blank. Ooh, point blank. I like that. Point blank. Point blank plus two. What do you think? What do you think, chat? Uh, melee target. Takes no dis disadvantage. It specifically is if you're attacking a target in melee. If you attack a ranged target and there's a target in melee, you still get that. You know what I mean? But this allows you to attack someone point blank. Because right now, it's if you use a ranged weapon against a melee target, it's disadvantage, right? Right, chat? Let's just add some, some sort of like customizations, you know what I mean? Not quite. I I saw not quite and yes. Attacking comes from being in melee even against the range target. So this one specifically, okay, so this one specifically allows you to if you attack a target who is in melee. No penalty. But if you're attacking a target in range, there's still a penalty. 
if you're doing a range attack against a target and there's a target in melee in your range, that's still going to be good. What about property that applies vulnerability on hit? Fuck no. That's, that is extremely broken. Broken. But I like this. I like the idea point blank. If you aren't melee yourself, there's no penalty. That's right. That's be exploited? What do you mean? The 1d4 dagger took plus two from light to plus two from that's plus two from Yeah, super easy. Yeah, you can make a melee dagger pretty easy. Oh, the vault? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's, 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 point blank requires a, a roll. Yeah, a trait. You can apply a trait, uh, the, the, the trait point blank if you want. All right, let's do a, let's do a gun blade. Let's say I want to do a long sword that has the option to blast with a gun. So I want to do a slashing weapon that can also do a piercing shot. You guys ready for this? Point Blake, if you make a ranged attack uh, with this weapon against a creature within five feet of you, within melee range of you, you do not suffer disadvantage on attack. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, it's not five feet, specifically melee range. Because what if you made a gun lance? Hmm? Nodders? Hmm? What about the gun lance? Uh, chat? Hmm? Nodders? Alright. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's let's do. Okay, so in the end, what do we want to make? We want to make a long sword weapon, correct? We want to make a long sword weapon. We want it to do one d eight slashing damage. We want it to have a gun attached to it that does one d eight piercing with a range of what? What kind of range are we thinking, Chad? Thirty or sixty feet? Thirty or sixty feet, Chad. Thirty, like something close range. You're thinking thirty, so that'd be thirty, thirty feet, ninety feet long. All right, let's do that. That that, that actually sounds like a really simple weapon. Let's do that. All right, here we go. Let's first make the long sword easy peasy. Gluten sap, thank you for the uh, tier one sub. Let's make the long sword easy peasy. Start with the DC zero. Um. Who's gonna make this? What level? Who, what level of, of of crafter would you like to make this? Wait, why is it thirty ninety and not thirty one twenty? Uh, for the range range mechanic, I want to do one x three x, and that's kind of nice a nice even balance because look at the weapon. Yeah, darts twenty sixty, short bows eighty three twenty. So it is a one four. We got a one four and we got a one three, and I think one three would be pretty good. On foot. Well, we could do one four. We could do one four. One x four x. I don't. I don't see a problem with that. What do you guys think? Do we do thirty one twenty? Now one three. Generally one four is ammunition weapons. One three is. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do one uh, one four then. Let's do one four, chat, because that is that is the standard. If that's the standard. We'll do one four. The so thirty one twenty is what we'll do. Thirty one twenty, and then if you increase the range, it becomes sixty sixty two forty, and then ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use rarely use range, range above the short range, anyways. That's true, Hooligan. But other players may. We can't just rely on our playstyle. We have to leave it open to other players' playstyle. Not much of a difference, I also agree with that. All right, so we're gonna have a gun edge to it that does 1d8. We could also just do 1d12. Include a loading so it only it does one attack. That could be fun. This weapon just attacks once. Let's see what loading does, chat. Because of the time required, so you can only fire one piece of ammunition from it when you use an action, bonus action, or reaction to fire it. Regardless of the number of attacks you make. 
But because of that, we can do a slash 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 and then a How do you reload the weapon? Is that part of a move action? Otherwise, you got like a chain gun where it goes and that can be fun too. And the loading literally gets rid of that. I understand loading's a crossbow type. Loading could also be a gun type. That's why I have loading as a minus two. Yeah. He's the third, it's part of an attack. It was part of the action. Gotcha. All right, so what are we thinking? 1d12? 1d8 slashing with the 1d12 gun? And then if you blast, if you do a blast and you can only do one attack, unless you want to do a pew, 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 A pew, pew, pew. Attack with free hand. Okie dokie. Let's do a, you know what? I want this gun blade to attack one time. I want to do a, one one blast in, but we still have the, uh, well, so let's, let, let's see. It's a complex weapon. It's a pretty complex weapon. We're gonna do a 1d12 piercing. We're gonna see how, what we can get away with that, okay? We're gonna make the long sword component first. What, what level, what level crafter are we doing for this, Chad? You think you think in level five? Got plus three, plus four, no expertise. Let's do a plus seven. Let's do a plus seven uh, blacksmith. 1d20 plus seven. Boom. All right, we got DC zero. The first thing I do is build, I gotta build the long sword part of it. So we're gonna go ahead with our material. We're gonna put it into a fine slashing point. Uh, boom. So we got a DC two and all it is is a slashing weapon. That's it. Nothing else the long sword I wanna do. I just wanna get that damage dice 1d4, 1d6, 1d8, which means we we'll do three rolls. I'm gonna go ahead and roll again with a critical hit. Chat, the DC stays the same and it becomes slashing 1d4. All right, I'm gonna keep crafting because we want to try and get that to a 1d8. Critic, critical, critical successes feel nice, Chad. They feel nice. When you get that critical success and you see that DC remain, ooh, it gets you, it gets you pumped a little bit. It gets me a little pumped. It gets me a little pumped, a little excited. I'm, I'm really like super stoked at that point. You know what I mean? It's really just a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. We got that. Yeah, a little bit of a trend. All right, so uh, let's try to get that 1d4 to a 1d6. Perfect. DC4 slashing 1d6. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and try and get there. 13. God, that was some low rolls, but we're okay. DC6 slashing 1d8. All right, so I've already fulfilled the sword part. It's a DC6. Typically, it's a DC8. We got really lucky with that critically success. How would criticals work for a modifier that reduces the DC already? What do you mean modifier that reduces the DC already? There's no modifier that reduces the DC already. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. All right, so we got DC six. Make it versatility. Versatility doesn't really work with this system. Oh, minus two modifier? Oh. Um, good point. Maybe we just make critical hit minus two to the DC. Minus two, whatever the total is. So minus two becomes minus four. How's that sound, Chad? How does that sound? Make people feel a little spicy. I mean, that, that's for me, and it's minus two otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we got that. Let's go ahead. Now we gotta make the gun point, which means still using the same DC. Still using the same DC chat. We're now gonna build a gun that's gonna be a part of the part of the weapon. This doesn't add this doesn't add any all this does is just the same weapon can do two things, which means the DC continues to increase the craft. DC kind of works as both the difficulty and the condition of the craft, so it takes sense to stay on for the critical win. Yeah. Versatility is a plus two. Versatility is a plus two two, but unfortunately it doesn't apply to the system because a plus two, what? Two I hold it in two hands. And it does extra damage. It does an extra dice of damage. We already do that. I mean, we could go ahead and do versatility does an extra plus two damage if you hold the two hands. Yeah. On it. Okay. So let let's say we want we wanted versatility. The problem here's the thing. Here's the problem with versatility, chat. Versatility would have to follow its own rules. So it'd actually be a. Okay, let me try something. It gets a little complicated, right? 
the thing is like if i do versatility and then i do heavy then it neutralizes itself out you know what i mean and it's still like increases the damage anyways so no it doesn't work versatility doesn't work buds versatility's it, that's the reason why i don't include versatility it's too complicated you know you know what i mean <laughs> because at that point it literally it literally muddles it up because versatility you, to make versatility work you have to apply a lot of conditions to it and then that's where it just gets too muddled and then at that point you just you know what i mean so we we don't include versatility What about only being able to apply or remove light, heavy? What, what does that mean, though? What are you talking about with that? How about slots for properties? It kind of gets, it kind of eliminates the, the freedom of the of the build at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, the moment the moment you put heavy in, in, in the mix with versatile, it become it almost becomes a little broken, because the only way I see versatile working is if you increase the dice uh, damage dice by two instead of one, and then once you apply a heaven to it, he heavy to it, it's effectively yeah, they, they, you're getting two for the price of one at that point. So it doesn't work. So no. As in, you can only choose one of the three. You can't choose the other two. Um, okay. That, that, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could be good. Like an exclusive, uh, an exclusive thing. Because the only way versatile would work, chat. No, versatile still doesn't work. And here's why, chat. We have to keep the properties to a plus two. To keep the keep the system simple. It's always plus two. There we can't we can't have yeah, Ver you would have to increase the versatile. You, you, this is what you'd have to do to make versatile work. You'd have to increase or decrease it. So to make first, the easiest way to make versatile work instead of a plus two, you just make it a plus one, and, and increase it by a damage dice whenever you're holding with two hands. But it just, yeah, versatile just doesn't work with the system, Chad. I'm sorry, it just makes it too muddled. Because to keep the plus two DC, I'd have to increase the damage dice by two and. Yeah, at that point it just becomes a little a little too much, you know. Honestly. Yeah, no. Can't make it work. I'm thinking I'm thinking of all the ways, chat, but you just can't make it work. What about if versatile is what transforms the weapon to a different weapon? Yeah, versatile is just not a worthwhile trait to try and make it work. I um, I don't know if I want to add a DC to do an alternate weapon. You know, I don't know if I want to do that. You know what I mean? Hey, Twitch, how you doing, bud? I don't, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. I'm gonna leave Twitch. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave uh, versatile for now, alone for now. I don't, I don't, I don't see it working. IMO, I just don't see it working. I just don't see it working. But without, without it just being just a muddled, a muddled mess. You know what I mean? With this weapon, can someone make trick weapons from Bloodborne? We're effectively making a gunblade right now. Let's go ahead and finish the gunblade chat. Just one hand or two hands of property. That's what I'm saying. Like I know, I know the option's cool, but the versus you don't you, you don't need to you don't need to make a you don't need to make that. So we're gonna do a one d ten or a one d twelve piercing with the gun part, and I don't I don't think we need an extra trait to increase the DC. So the sword's done. So we got we got the long sword now. Now we're gonna go and uh, attach a gun to it, which would effectively be a piercing weapon that we would shape into a gun. We'll give it the loading properties so that it can only. It, only blast with it once per once per round um this also allows you to make combinations of attack and then blast with the gun if you'd like you can, you, yeah i like that i like that 
So let's go do that. Let's just put the gallery. So I'm gonna do, uh, so I'm gonna first start with the range. So that's DC six that I gotta beat. That's a 19. And we're gonna DC eight. So now we have a slashing 1D8 weapon with a range 30 to 120 uh, secondary weapon. Okay, so I'm just gonna say E and S. So the secondary weapon that you can go and use as part of it. Range 30 to 120. I'm gonna add a uh, piercing. There it is. So now I got DC 10. So again, I'm gonna do, it's a primary slashing 1d8 weapon. But now we've got a uh, range 120 piercing, okay? And then I am gonna go ahead and add the loading. It's gonna lower the, the DC 13. Yep, so now we've got DC uh, eight. So same thing here, but now it's got loading. I'm just kind of writing this down so you guys are keeping track of what we're making. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do point blank. There we go. So we're back to DC 10. And now with the DC 10 base, we got to start working on damage. All right. The players be able to add mechanics like use reaction to pull the trigger for extra damage. That'd be a lot of fun. I would, I would love, I would love a uh, trait like that. Reactionary damage. That could be fun. On, on your, on a secondary weapon. I'll think more on that, but I think that could be a lot of fun. Uses your reaction. I think that could be, I think that could be a, a, a lot of fun. Oh my God. Well, we roll a five. Ooh, things are getting a little, things are getting a little dicey now, chat. Oh boy. This becomes a DC 12 now. I just gotta roll five or higher. Woo. All right, now it's DC 14. The one D six piercing. Remember, summer slapped your butt. Yeah, I definitely want phase three to have more reaction uses like parrying and things like that. I think that could be a lot of fun. I think that could be a lot of fun. Or like a focus, like doing like a focus, like a plus two and then attack. Or reaction to do like uh, an attack at like disadvantage. I think that could be a lot of fun. That could be like focus continuation. Parry. I want to parry. I want to parry trait. Uh, a parry one that adds plus three as a reaction to an attack that's being that's given you. Um, I like to charge. Plus two to plus two to hit. Next attack is a plus two to hit, and then, and then a disadvantage uh, attack. Quick draw to shoot as a reaction. Excuse me. But that's not in the crafting system. Or it could be. Could be. I also like adding a sneak attack dice. That's a fun, like like a like a dark steel that can add sneak attack. That could be fun too. Oh god, it's eight o'clock. I guess I'm done eating. All right, so I got DC 14. I gotta get this to a 1d8 at least, so I'm going for it. And boom, there it is, done. Up oh, guidance. There it is. I'm good. I spent my guidance. Uh, 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 gotta have your trusty cleric. Gotta have your trusty cleric when you're working on this shit. All right. See, this is where it gets a little dangerous now, though. I'm at 1d8 piercing. 
I got the 1d8, I gotta, I gotta at least get one damage. I gotta get one more damage up. I gotta get this to a 1d10. I gotta get this to a 1d10, dude. I gotta get this to a 1d10. Please. Please. Uh, oh, ah! And there it is. The weapon just, just, just broken. Just immediately falls apart. My baby! And it just melts right there. Fuck! But yeah, that's crafting. That's crafting in a nutshell. And it is, because I, I, I kind of see, I can kind of see what I'm doing at that point in time, you know? But yeah, I mean, uh, I like it. I like this as a crafting system. I'm gonna add this. You can use your lucky though. Oh, chat, I know you want to see versatile so bad. I don't want to deal with it right now, dude. I, I I appreciate your input for versatile, but man, I really don't. I know people are like, oh, but versatile. I love versatile, dude. Please, please versatile me, please. Please, dude, I love versatile. Versatile me, please. I love it. Fix versatile. No, versatile's dead. No, I, I appreciate the thought chat. Uh, my head, my headspace isn't good for versatile yet. Um, increasing DC, guarding at zero, craft. How nasty did you make a two-handed heavy gun? Pretty nasty, I think. You just saw that we were able to make like a 2D12 fucking giant ass maze if we were at level 10. So the op the the option oh sorry, I didn't mean to go because the the option definitely is there. Uh how would armor smithing work with this system? I have to think about it. More than likely it'd be like armor class increases by one, which is plus two. Okay, um, with armor, there really isn't much more you can add. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So I, I'd have to, it'd be, it'd be a different base DC, honestly. It'd be a different base DC, the dudes. Indeed, 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 my friends. Well, hot damn, chat. You know, we, uh... I, I, I was, I was curious. I was curious if we should play Minecraft. But honestly, I've been doing D&D &D talk all day, which is, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not against that. I think I'm going to wrap up. I think we're, we've, we've approached about four hours, so I'm going to... I think I'm gonna skadoodle. I think I'm gonna skadoodle. Guys, thank you so much for all the, the subscriptions, for the, all the follows, for all the new shit. You guys are great. Uh, let me go and actually check. I think we got some more while I was working. I'm sorry for everyone that I didn't um, respond to. Gluten Sap, thank you for the tier one sub. Welcome to Rack Pack, Chronic Ace. V, thank you for the tier one sub for five months. Evan Sky, thank you for the tier one sub for 17 months. Dr. John, thank you for that. Tier one sub. I think that was everyone that we missed. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I like I like this weapon crafting system, bro. I want to try it with the Goyles, with the VTuber group, with the uh, Altered Ballad group. See if they like it. Seems very strong. Yeah. Imagine. Oh, I didn't show you. I didn't show you the one thing. Uh, hold on one second. Let me show you this chat. The one thing I did want to make. All right, new system. New system. You ready? New weapon. I'm gonna make a long sword, but this long sword is gonna have a special gift attached to it. You guys ready? All right, here we go. I'm gonna do this. Let's begin. Uh, I'm gonna do slashing, boom, DC 24 is a DC two with slashing. 
I'm gonna try and get the D8. Here we go, nine. God damn, that was scary, but here we go. One D4 slashing sword. Here we go. DC six, the one D6 slashing sword. And then DC eight with the one D eight slashing sword. And I am now going to add the scholarly trait. What's that? DC 10, 1D8, scholarly slashing. Scholarly. You can use your int mod instead of your strength. Mage weapons. Scholarly, wise, and attuned. Scholarly for intelligence, wise for wisdom, attuned for charisma. Nodders. Chunky for God, uh, no con weapon. <laughs> no con at this time. Because there's no, uh, there's no, um, there's no class that uses constitution as part of their attack roll. You could totally make a, yeah, totally make a book, a, a bludgeoning book. <laughs> yep, bird. Big thought. All right, chat. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. This was a fun Monday sesh, Monday hangout sesh. You guys are the best. Join our IO Discord. Join our IO Discord. Join our community. Lovely, it's wholesome. Head on over there. Thank you to everyone who subscribed, 55 subscribers. That's amazing. We have a 3,000 subscriber goal. If we get 3,000, I'll share my old D&D book. Very excited to do that with y'all. With y'all. And uh, yeah, support the Patreon. Patreon includes MP3s, uh, maps, and uh, game master notes like we're working on right now. And finally, go to our merch store. Chat! Merch. We just um, Role play rack merch. Currently live at redultimus.com. Thank you to everyone who supported the merch so far. Because of your help, we're going to continue to, uh, because of your purchases, rather, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to sell more of uh, the Roleplay Rack merch. I would love to, uh, yeah. Th uh, thank you to everyone who purchased merch. I see some people over there right now. Uh, I see we got a couple orders in during the stream. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate that uh, a lot. Because like I said before, chat, your uh, contribution merch-wise is what um, allows me to continue to make more merch for you. Which I'm uh, if you would like to check out World of Vile on your own, go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash world. Uh, tomorrow, more than likely, is going to be a Final Fantasy 14 stream. I'm going to finish um, 5.0. I'm going to finish 5.0 tomorrow. I'm with a lady. Some shit's about to go down. Tomorrow's going to be the day that I finish 5.0. So please stop by. It'll be a nice, chill, casual stream, and I would love to see your faces. And then Wednesday's Goblins Bio, 8 p.m. EST. Fire View Clip Thursday at 7 p.m. EST, and then Altered Ballad Session Zero, 5 p.m. EST this Friday. Mm -mm. Good shit. Good shit. Also, good time hanging out with you. Appreciate y'all very much. Let's see who's available. Bod it is to Wrong with the bod. Uh session zero will be up on YouTube Sunday. I I would push it for Saturday, but I I, I can't upload um I can't upload uh VODs on YouTube uh under twenty four hours. It'll be Sunday. Sunday at twelve PM. 
Oh, who's doing what? Who's doing what? I would rate, I would rate Yenner's, but I'm, I'm small fry. I don't think 300 plus people are going to put a drop in the bucket, so I'll send you some. Kraken apparently is building a circus, and he just started his stream. Go say hi to Kraken. Right to you, Lanky. Right to you, Blankies, my friend. Head on over to Kraken. Say hi. I'll see you guys the next time. Bye-bye!